All right. Hello, everybody. Hello. Uh, if you think you're at the ArcGIS Maps SDK for Flutter session, you are in the right place. Uh, come on in, have a seat. Uh, my name is Paul Sturm, and I'm a senior software engineer at Esri. And my colleague here is Jen Merritt, and she's a senior project, product engineer at Esri. And we are here to talk to you about the brand new entrant into the world of native SDKs, and that is the up and coming Flutter SDK. And before we get started, I just wanted to pull the audience quickly and uh, just to make sure my microphone is working. Uh, who here has, is already working with Flutter, if anybody? Creating Flutter apps of any sort, not necessarily the Maps app. So we've got a couple of them. Um, uh, so who here has already heard of Flutter before today? Before today, yeah. Because when I was here one year ago, this was my very first introduction to the world of Flutter. Never heard of it before, a day before. Um, Dev Summit 2023. And uh, it says, third question uh, of those of you who are thinking of deploying an app using Flutter, uh, how many of you are going to use it for mobile, mobile Android or iOS? Yep, that's going to be the majority. Uh, anyone? expecting to deploy on desktop, either partially or in the future, maybe. Um, and question that's not really relevant to our SDK, is anyone looking in their organization to use Flutter on the web? Anyone, anyone? It is available on the web, but, but we are not uh, suit suitable for that. Um, all right, so that's good. Um, that's kind of what I was expecting. People are interested in Flutter for mobile, and that's good for us, because that's what we have prepared. Um, and then, so the agenda for today, I'm gonna run down this list. Um, we're just gonna talk through a brief history of this new SDK that's coming out. And we're gonna ask the question, you know, why Flutter? Why are you interested in Flutter? Why are we interested in Flutter? Then we'll talk about getting started with Flutter, then we'll go through a demo of what it will be like to work with the Maps SDK in the world of Flutter. And then we'll talk about the beta, the upcoming beta program. Um, and then we'll, if there's time left over, we'll have Q&A. And then just a short brief uh, listing of some next steps that you could take in your Flutter journey. So just a brief history of the Maps SDK. It all began. Uh, one year ago, just down the hall in the Dev Summit, and uh, our friends at the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife had uh, did a user presentation where they were using Flutter with ArcGIS Maps, and they were shipping an app. And this came as a surprise to me because we do not actually ship a Flutter SDK, and so I was curious how they managed to do that. And they were building their Flutter app on top of the ArcGIS Maps SDK for Kotlin and for Swift, or, or the predecessors, the, the Java and the Objective-C SDKs. Um, and so that definitely piqued my interest. You know, how can we do that too? Can we do that in a more direct fashion that doesn't involve um, you know, building on top of the other SDKs? And then at last year at Dev Summit, we also just did some f informal hand raising polls to ask, you know, who's interested in Flutter, and uh, there's a lot of people interested in Flutter. So uh, in the spring of last year, we decided to start a research spike, and the, the goal of the research spike was just to see if there's, if it's technically feasible for us to deploy a, a Maps SDK onto Flutter. Um, and just as a little bit of background for all of our native SDKs, they're all structured approximately the same. All of our uh, ArcGIS functionality is implemented in uh, C++, and um, it draws on your device using either Metal, a Metal framework on your Apple devices or OpenGL on other devices. And so the basic idea of uh, shipping a Maps SDK is, number one, can we call into the, co the code, the C++ code, from the 
the environment that we were targeting, and also can we present uh, that drawing surface as part of the, uh, the tech stack that we're targeting. So we need to be able to host that metal view or that OpenGL view. Um, and uh, yeah, and then so around the C++ core implementation, we have a, an interoperability layer that's written in C, and that makes it easy to expose our functionality to each of these different SDKs. And so the research spike was to ask those two questions. You know, can we call in to the interoperability layer, and can we host a drawing service surface uh, within the Flutter you know widget hierarchy? And so in the summer, we were assembling a team. It's a lot like the Avengers, not quite as exciting, but uh, me and Jen and uh, three or four others uh, came together to build out the the app, um, and so we proved out that we can access the interoperability layer from Flutter uh, using a Flutter technology called FFI and FFI Gen, and that stands for Foreign Function Interface. Um, and so that was a technology provided by Flutter that allows us to call in to our C code, so that was good. There's one check checkbox checked off, and then um, we needed a way to host the drawing surface so you can actually see the map drawn on screen in your Flutter app. Uh, and first we uh, tried that on iOS to embed the, the metal view in Flutter, and that worked out pretty good. And uh, in the summer we did the same with Android. And the necessary component provided by Flutter is a technolo Flutter technology called Platform View. It's just called Platform View, and that's created by Flutter, and that allows you to embed a view, a native view, into the Flutter hierarchy. And that's exactly what we needed, and it worked as advertised. After some long, hard struggle, we got it all working. Um, and uh, the platform view technology in Flutter is supported on mobile, but it's not supported quite so well on desktop. Um, so that kind of drives our our, our opening platform support, which is we are targeting mobile uh, because that's where we can get now today. We can get on Android, we can get on iOS. And there, are, there is a possibility that as that technology evolves, we'd be able to get onto other platforms. But for now, for in the near term, medium term, um, we're pitching this as a solution for your mobile map apps. Um, then in the fall, that's when we first publicly talked about the Maps SDK. And Jen here in Berlin, in, in perfect German, announced the, the new SDK. Actually, no, it was in English. Um, and that was our first public uh, expression of the Maps SDK. And uh, that brings us around to Dev Summit 2024, where you are now sitting in our very first tech session um, and we are at this very slide on this very bullet point. And from here on, we are uh, boldly going into the future of the Flutter SDK. Uh, all right, so we want to ask the question, you know, why Flutter? What's, what's the big deal about Flutter? Why are all the celebrities talking about it? Um, and the first thing is it's cross-platform. So if you like cross-platform solutions, Flutter has that for you. Um, and the benefits of a cross-platform solution are pretty obvious. Um, you can cut your, your code in half. You don't have to write everything twice or once per platform. Um, and this is always a trade-off when you adopt a cross-platform uh, solution like Flutter you're making a trade-off. You're you're leaving behind the first the, the first party supported uh, technology, whether that's Swift or Kotlin, and you are adopting uh, third-party technology. So you are losing some fidelity to the underlying platform, but the benefit you're getting is that you can write your app once and deploy it on multiple platforms, 
And then you can also you can also reduce the amount of technology stacks you have to be comfortable with and be an expert in. So you only have to understand Flutter and you can reach two platforms. You don't have to maintain expertise on Swift as well as Kotlin. Um, and kind of the second big thing that might be driving your interest to Flutter is it is particularly productive for developers. Um, it has a, a, a reactive UI paradigm, and that's a big word, and that um, don't want to get into it too much, um, but, the, but it's, it's more like if you use, ever used React Native on web development, um, it's just a different mental model for how you uh, build your user interface. Um, and once you can kind of adopt the mindset that Flutter presents to you, it, uh, it can be more productive for you. Um, then the second bullet point is the, the hot reload functionality. And this is great. This is a great way to eliminate a lot of the unnecessary overhead of your average uh, compile, run, debug loop. Um, it allows you to bypass a lot of uh, a lot of stuff that you don't have to do anymore. You don't have to compile your whole app, uh, deploy it onto the target device, make sure it's all code signed, launch it, and then work your way back to the step you were working on. Instead, with Hot Reload, you can be actively developing, and the incremental changes that you make as you're developing. Um, they get reflected within you know, a fraction of a second onto the device or the simulator you're developing with. So that saves you a lot of time. Um, it takes up, it eliminates the time that you would normally go get a cup of coffee or read your email or whatever. You can just stay in the zone. And third, the Flutter platform gives you this Dart language. And so Dart is the fundamental underlying language that Flutter is implemented in. And it's, it's a nice language to work with. Uh, it's not trying to be C++. It's not trying to be all things to all people. It's not a replacement for a systems level programming language. Instead, it's a nice, comfortable application programming language. It has a simple syntax. Um, it's strongly typed and it has null safety. And um, it has this async await uh, paradigm that we'll go through a little bit later. And that's a way to help you um, do asynchronous programming um, in a cleaner fashion. And it's garbage collected. So if you like garbage collection, um, it is what it is. And, and also the, the Dart program or platform has a lot of modern tooling and integration into your IDE. Um, so for example, it has a package manager called pub.dev, and that makes it really easy to just assemble existing uh, functionality out on their pub.dev website. You can pull it all in, integrate it all, build it, deploy it, um, and it's much simpler. I come from a C++ background, so a lot of this stuff is really refreshing. Um, or, but also, if you come from a JavaScript background, it's refreshing in other ways. Um, it doesn't have some of the idiosyncrasies of JavaScript development. Um, instead, you can get to develop in Dart. And uh, the third thing why you might be interested in Flutter is uh, it's backed by Google, and it has you know broad community support. And the little charts and graphs I put on there, that's a uh, a diagram of Stack Overflow, questions posted on Stack Overflow for various uh, technology tech stacks. And you can see the blue line, that's Flutter. So somewhere in the middle of about 2019, Flutter really took off and it uh, you know, made a splash. And this is the number of Stack Overflow questions. So that either means it garnered a lot of attention or people had a lot of problems with it. I'm not exactly sure. I'm gonna go with the first one. <laughs> uh, and then, okay, so then 
the second why question is, you know, why is Flutter interesting to us, you know, to Esri, to the, um, and it's all of those things we just talked about, you know, like we want to have that developer productivity and cross-platform support. And also, uh, because of the community requests made by uh, at Dev Summit and in other other uh, ways of feedback, um, we have a lot of community requests for Flutter. So, like on the right here, this is the community portal website. And you know, don't look at the date; that's a little embarrassing. Uh, it's ever since 2018, people have been asking about uh, Maps SDK on Flutter, and we finally got there. And in, in our defense, it's possibly, probably that this year was the first year where we could really um, overcome those technical hurdles we talked about earlier. Uh, so this is really kind of the earliest that it's been possible for us to uh, attempt a Flutter SDK. So it's good timing. And the third thing why Flutter interests us uh, is we as the natives SDK uh, team as a whole, we want to meet developers where they are. So, if the developer interest is in Flutter or any of these other areas, you know, we want to have a Maps SDK available for you in the environment that you are interested in. Uh, so, in that case, you know, in this case, it's Flutter. And so, since we have that developer feedback, the developer interest combined with the technical feasibility, um, we are now ready to make it, make a go of it, make a go of the Flutter SDK. Uh, all right, so let's say you wanna get started. Let's say you've are at least partially convinced to attempt to use uh, Flutter for your next big development project. Um, how are you gonna get started? And so first, you gotta get started with the Flutter tech stack, just absent the Maps SDK. So it's pretty easy. You go to flutter.dev slash get started, and you'll see the website pictured on the right. Please ignore the new Chrome available button. I promise I update my Chrome on occasion. Um, so you'll, you'll get started here. You'll see a big friendly page. Um, and so to get started, you, you want to get started with Mac OS as your host platform. Uh, the other platforms are possible, uh, but we are kind of coming out the door with uh, our initial focus on Mac OS as the host. And um, then also, as you're working through these steps, we recommend using Visual Studio Code and its Flutter plugin. There are other ways to do this. You could work with Android Studio. That's certainly a valid choice if you're comfortable and familiar with that environment. Um, but if you're coming in fresh, you know, we have more experience with using Visual Studio Code, and it has a lot of that built-in integration, works well. And then depending on which of the two platforms you're targeting, you'll, you'll still need to have Xcode for all of your iOS support, including the simulator, and you'll need to have Android Studio for um, all of your Android support, including an Android emulator. Still have to have those installed um, on your MacBook um, and so once you're up and running with Flutter, uh, then you're able to start coding with uh, the Maps SDK. And we're skipping a couple of steps here. Um, we'll talk about the beta in a little bit. Oh, yeah. Right, right. But cool. for now, we'll show you, Jen will show you how to display a map using Coder. Thanks, Paul. Um, so yeah, this is going to be a little uh, sort of whirlwind tour into starting a, with a Flutter application and adding a map. And then I'll show you a couple more examples um, just of, of small applications that show some of the API that's going to be available in that uh, beta release for you to, to have a go with. So as Paul kind of talked through there, the dev environment is set up. So I've got Flutter installed. I've got VS Code open here. And initially, you will create a new Flutter project, and Flutter provides really simple commands in the uh, command line, just flutter create to create a new project. And you can also make use of the VS Code tools as well. I've gone ahead and created my uh, flutter project. And um, as Paul's mentioned, um, pub.dev is flutter's package repository. So like, 
the end goal is, is that we'll have a, an ArcGIS maps package on that repository for the, for the beta release. We'll be providing access to that through our early adopters site, which will provide information about um, at the end of the session. But what that means is that you will download a package and work with it locally initially. So all you'll do is unzip that package. It'll contain a readme, and we'll give you all the steps you need to create that project and get started. And so what I've got is I have the package here on my machine, and I have my Flutter project I've created here, demo app that I've got open in VS Code. So you can see that it's relative to my project. So within my project, I'm going to go into this pubspec.yaml file. And this is where you define your dependencies for your Flutter app. So you can see I have a dependency here on ArcGIS maps and to that path that we just saw. So I've got ArcGIS maps now in my, my application. So this is kind of a key checkpoint where I'm now free to, to add a map uh, and make use of, of all that API that we provide. So the file that I have open now is this main.dart file. And it's usually the main.dart file, but the file that contains this main method is really the entry point for your Flutter application. And that main method then calls this run app function. And this is what initializes your Flutter app. Um, and we are then making use of this widget called material app to structure our app uh, and assign a theme in this case. And this is kind of one of the key points about uh, Flutter is that everything is a widget right from the start of, of your application. And widgets um, are very declarative and they represent the layout component. So things like containers and stacks, uh, padding, and then you also have interactive elements, things like your buttons, text fields, and that kind of thing. So we'll see various examples of widgets um, and the word widget starts to, to lose a lot of meaning as well. Um, so first of all, before I can add a map uh, into my application, I need to actually import ArcGIS. So since I've added a dependency on it, I can import the package. And it's got a swiggly line just because we're not using it yet. I'm now going to just grab a code snippet just to save me boring you all by typing this out. And the first thing we need to do so that we can add a, a base map style is to set an API key, which will be, if you've used the other uh, native maps SDKs, will be a, a familiar workflow. You can hard code it in, so you just set it on the ArcGIS environment. Um, but generally, it's good practice to not check your API keys into source code. So one thing that we've uh, done in this example is we're using an environment variable for our API key. And I have a, a JSON file here, which is not checked in. Um, and you are able to then, when you run a Flutter application, you can pass in that file using a, a flag called dart define from file. And you can do that from the command line if that's, that's how you like to run things. Um, or I quite like configuring my VS code to do it for me. Um, so I have this launch.json file, uh, and I'm passing in my uh, environment variable file when I run an application. So that means I can make use of the UI to run my apps, which I personally quite like doing. And so we'll, we'll see how that gets applied uh, when I run the app shortly. Um, so back to adding a map, we have this widget here. Again, everything is a widget. So if I jump into it here, um, one thing to note is that this uh, widget that I'm creating here is a stateful widget. So that means it's going to have um, state, mutable state, so things that are going to change uh, and the, the application needs to keep uh, track of. And again, we'll see examples a bit more of state uh, as, as I go through the demos. Right now, this application is just showing some text, so I'm going to replace that uh, with a map. First thing I'm going to do is just remove this const keyword. That's used if, you're, if there's the thing that you're uh, displaying in your app is not going to change after compilation, which some text isn't, then you can use that uh, const keyword. But we're going to be building a more interactive app. So I've just taken that out. But I didn't want to not mention it. And you'd be like, why are you deleting that? So into the scaffold widget, which is a really useful widget uh, that Flutter provide. It's kind of like a framework uh, widget, a bit, I guess, like a scaffold. Um, and you, it has things you can apply, like an app bar uh, and lay out your app uh, using some of its properties. So we're going to use that as our base. And then I will create my ArcGIS map view widget. 
And the first thing it's going to uh, require is uh, this controller provider. And so we're going to provide um, an ArcGIS map view controller to it. And this is how we can then manipulate the state of the ArcGIS map view later down the line. So things like uh, setting a viewpoint and, and other things like that, which we'll, again, we'll see examples of. So I am going to create my map view controller. and apply it here. And then we can make use of a, a really nice language feature of Dart called cascade not notation, which is this double dot. Um, and we can actually directly set an ArcGIS map onto uh, our map view at this point. So that's kind of a, a good example of just some of the nice little features that just, I don't know, makes it quite fun to use, quite quick to use. So we'll go with OSM streets, which is quite a nice one. Uh, and you'll see as well, I'm adding these commas um, because when I hit save, Dart then uh, kind of lay or Flutter Light lays things out quite nicely for you. You can see it really shows you where everything's happening, which is, again, quite a nice feature to keep track of. So I've added a map. Now that all that's left to do is to run the application. So um, I'm going to use simulators. You can use real devices purely because I need to project this. I've got my two uh, emulators up here, my Android emulator and my uh, iOS one. So I now select these from the, the bottom right in VS Code and run. And again, you can do this as well from the command line uh, using the flutter run command. And you can um, choose your emulator, choose your devices. Uh, it's kind of whichever way you prefer to work. And then once the map launches, we'll get our map. And so this is, uh, you know, classic map view and map, uh, if you're familiar with that GIS. And it's probably the Wi-Fi being a bit slow with the base map. We'll just reboot the Android one. And while that's rebooting, um, Paul mentioned Hot Reload as being a really nice feature um, of, of Flutter as a development tool. And it basically means that changes in the running app. OK, there's obviously something going on with the network with this, because the base map isn't showing. So we'll just work with iOS for this part of the demo. Um, yeah, so you can see code changes reflected immediately in the running applications. So for example, with Scaffold, I'd mentioned that we have this uh, app bar feature. So if we choose app bar, and then I can add a title. And again, everything's a widget. So we create a text widget, and then I'll call it map app. And we can make it const because it's not going to change. And it updates immediately in the app. And in fact, although the base map's not loading through the network on the Android device, you can see that it is, it is updating there. Um, and we can also do other things like there's another property on scaffold, such as a floating action button. Um, and this is a, quite a good way to show an example of uh, how we can make use of the um, map view controller. So say, for example, if I rotate this map, we can then call our map view controller and access all those properties uh, that you're used to seeing on a map view, uh, such as the viewpoint rotation, and we can set that back to north, which is zero degrees. And we can interact with our button and kind of test that out immediately. So let me just make sure I've covered everything there. Yep, so that's kind of creating a map. So if we hop back just to some key takeaways on the slides, I can do that, can I? Do you want to just run through those? And I'll just troubleshoot this. OK. So what we saw from that demo uh, was how to create a new project. You use the Flutter Create command line, or VS Code can do it for you. Um, and that creates all of the um, configuration files you need to build for the, your, the platforms you're targeting. And then, so after you create a project in Flutter, you then want to add our Maps SDK, which we're calling ArcGIS Maps, because that's a little bit shorter. Um, you add that as a dependency in your pubspecs.yaml. Um, and then from there, you start building your widgets. Um, 
you're definitely going to want to add an ArcGIS map view widget somewhere in your hierarchy, and then you can mix and match the Flutter widgets that you need, like buttons and, and uh, scroll views and drawers and such uh, to, to build out your particular use case. Uh, right, and then the last key takeaway from that demo is the hot reload. And with that, you can, as you can see, as you saw, as you are adding buttons, um, they appear almost as if by magic. It's not 100% magic, it's about like 80% magic. Um, it, it works, in a lot of cases, it works as you are building out and adding new uh, buttons and widgets. Um, but if you do something more complicated, um, that, would that would have required it to go back in time. It can't do that, so there's always a boundary where you, you do have to restart the app. But when Hot Reload works, it works great, and it makes for a very uh, pleasant developer experience because you get to skip past all of the compile and code signing and um, copying out to your device. Um, it just takes a quick shortcut and gets you your new code up and running. And then, so now we're gonna move on to the next example app. We're gonna yep. elaborate on our code a little more. Yep. And um, Android is up and running. It is. Yeah, I don't think it was happy with me swapping out a hard connection to Wi-Fi. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna just run through two more example apps and just show you a few more bits of the ArcGIS API and how it can link in with the Flutter uh, API and just a couple more of those sort of um, pro developer productivity areas. So this is an example of where I'm not actually going to um, use Hot Reload. I'm going to start a new application. Um, so because we're not just updating things in the UI, we need to, to rebuild the application at this point. So um, we were calling Map App before when we were displaying our map. And I've got another widget that I've created called Location App. So I'm going to call that one instead. And I'm just going to set this off running. Uh, while I talk through that file. So in my location app file, I've created another stateful widget called location app. And this time we're going to be displaying, um, well, some location on the map. And in this case, we're going to be making use of a simulated location data source purely because we're doing a, a demo really and using the simulators. If you were using real devices and uh, you, you were kind of out in the field and use them, you'd use the system location data source. But it, the workflows are more or less the same. Uh, and then we have these three um, uh, properties here in the state, which uh, we'll come back to and we'll, they're currently unused, uh, but we'll, we'll come back to them shortly. Aside from that, the layout of the app will be familiar. We have our app bar, we have our app GIS map view. There's one additional thing we're doing here, and we're calling this on map view ready function in the map view. And what that's doing is once the map view is kind of finished initializing, we're then uh, going to be initializing our location display, which is dependent on that, that map view being created. Um, uh, here you can see an example of, of a, uh, async await that Paul mentioned. Um, so it's quite a nice linear way of handling asynchronous uh, functions. So into that method then, we create our location display, which we get from our map view controller. We then set our location data source, which, as I said, in this case is our simulated location data source, but you could use your system device location data source. And then we're applying an autopan mode, which is allowing our map to follow the little icon that's moving around there, just doing basically a lap of the convention center. And then once we have our location uh, display set up, we initialize our location data source. We're grabbing a simulated route from a JSON file in this case, uh, which is uh, building a polyline that our location is following around. We start our location data source to start the feed of, data, of uh, location coming in. And then every time that location changes, we're listening to it and we're performing actions when that location changes. In this case, we're setting some state. So this set state function is from Flutter. And it basically is a way of telling Flutter that something has changed and you probably need to rebuild the UI. So you can see there's three elements here, latitude, longitude, and heading, um, which are, uh, we kind of initially defined when we created the app. And so I'm just gonna grab another code snippet here. 
and show you how we can make use of that in the app. So again, this will make use of hot reload. So on my stack, I have my ArcGIS map view widget. So on top of that, I want to display this positioned box, um, which is going to be a container so that I can style it a little bit. And inside that is a column widget and three text widgets. So I'll hit save. And we can see that now in our applications. And you'll notice that as the blue dot moves around, these values are updating. And so this uh, text block here is reading the uh, latitude that's being updated every time that location feed is coming in. So that just kind of introduces how sort of state works in Flutter uh, and how you can use it to read uh, data that's changing, uh, such as location. OK, so now I'm going to stop this app. Again, not something we can do with um, Hot Reload to kind of load in a whole new uh, app. So instead of location app, I'm going to call geocode app. And if you'd like to guess what this one's going to show, I'll just get that running again on both of my devices. And yeah, we're going to do some geocoding. So this time, we're going to make use of the locator task API. So I've defined um, a locator task based on the world geocode server. And we're going to define some geocode parameters. We're then going to create a graphics overlay, which is how we can display graphics on top of the map. Uh, and this is what's going to display the result of our uh, geocode operation. So once again, familiar code here with our setup of our app um, and our ArcGIS map view. And then we're adding a text field, which is uh, a Flutter widget, a UI widget, which is where we're going to actually put in our um, searches. So once the map view is ready this time, last time we initialized our uh, location data source, this time we're uh, loading our locator task. So I'm now going to do some searches. And so when I submitted, when I typed into the search field and then submitted my uh, result, we have this on submitted action within the text field widget, which is calling this method on search submitted. And it provides the search text, so essentially whatever I typed in. And in this case, we're carrying out our uh, geocode operation on our locator task using that search, ta search text. Uh, and then it's checking to see if there are any results, which there were in this case. So we're grabbing the first result. I'm creating a graphic, and uh, we're setting some properties on that graphic. So we're giving it a geometry, which is based on the location provided by the geocode result. And then we're also setting some attributes on the graphic, which are also based on that geocode result. And we'll come back to those uh, in a moment. We then add our graphic to the graphics overlay, which is how we display it on the map. And finally, obviously, we updated our viewpoint, so we're now over Palm Springs. Uh, and so we've set the extent of the viewpoint over our geocode result. So this is kind of nice. It shows a point, but it would be nice if there was maybe some interactivity here. So right now I'm tapping and, and nothing's happening. So we can tap into the, uh, <laughs> the um, interactions on the map view. Um, and so we have this on tap method here you can use. And I've already prepared the code that we're going to call. So I am just going to call this on tap method which if I expand here, um, what we're going to do is perform an identify graphics overlay operation on the map view. If where I tap, it identifies a graphic, we're going to pull out some information and display it in a dialog. So I've hit save. So our widget tree is redrawn. So we've made use of hot reload there. And now if I tap on the um, graphic, we will uh, go through these steps here. We'll identify the graphic. Uh, and then we're displaying as the title this matched address attribute, which we applied from the geocode result. So that's effectively what it's found, which is Palm Springs, California in this case. And we're then grabbing the uh, x and the y from uh, the geometry of the graphic and displaying that in the dialog as well. And then this alert dialog is a, a widget provided by Flutter. So we're making use of those UI elements in this case. So that's. It in terms of these demos, I think there's just a couple of things we wanted to add at this point. 
I've used emulators again purely because projection wise it's the easiest thing to do, but you can do the same with physical devices. So you can use hot reload with your physical devices. And I think in our daily work, we, we do that a lot ourselves. Um, and obviously you can, you know, you would ultimately deploy um, to those devices. I've been working in debug mode. So just running my apps in debug mode, which allows for hot reload. Ultimately you would build your apps in release mode. Flutter provides very simple uh, commands uh, to, to build those apps. Um, and then the end goal would be that you would deploy your app to your specific platform. So it's one code base, but for your iOS app, you would still deploy through the app store in the normal way, go through the usual processes. For Android, you would deploy uh, to the Google store. So that's all the same. That said, obviously for the beta release, we won't be uh, deployment isn't something that you can do with that, but that would be the, the kind of end goal uh, with a Flutter app. Um, so I think we'll hop back to the slides for uh, key takeaways. Key takeaways. Cool. Yep. So um, if you remember going back to the location app, we looked at how we can update state in a stateful widget. So in that case, we were listening to changes to the location and then we were setting those uh, latitude, longitude, heading properties. Uh, every time the location updated and set using the set state method uh, tells Flutter to, to redraw and we can make use of that uh, changing state. Um, yeah, and then I think the main takeaway here for this second bullet point is just that, you know, the, the functionality in the ArcGIS Maps API is what you see in other um, SDKs. So if you've used, you know, the Swift uh, or Kotlin APIs or any of the others, it's the same principles, the same classes, this location data source concept, locator tasks, graphics, graphics overlay, but just with Dart language features and in a Flutter context, um, as Paul kind of talked about at the start. And finally, uh, just an example of how you can use interactions with the ArcGIS map view widget. So in that case, we did the identify on tap uh, to, to load a dialogue when you taps on the graphic. And yeah, that's all. Okay, so next we want to talk about some details of the beta program. Uh, and the first big ticket item is the beta program it will be released in April. Uh, and we're just saying April uh, without providing a specific date, um, but it will come out alongside the regular 200.4 releases of the other SDKs. Um, so you won't have to wait long. And uh, the way you sign up for the, the uh, beta program is through this earlyadopter.esri.com website. And that's the picture you see on the right. Uh, if you go there now, you will not see the Flutter beta program. Uh, once it's announced, it'll be announced on our blogs and, um, or you can just hit refresh every day if you want. Um, either way, and then so hop on, create an account, sign up for the early adopter site and that'll be where you download the package um, and have access to that and one very important point is we're coming out the gate with a limited feature set we're not uh, we don't have the SDK built out to cover the entire uh, feature set of the of your usual native SDK um, and the reason why we're doing it that way is we want to get something out to the market quickly so that we can get feedback uh, from you guys to let us know what we're doing wrong um, uh, and what we're doing right. That'd be good too. And um, so coming out the door, you will be able to do a bunch of simple 2D workflows. Uh, like you saw, you can load your maps and base maps. You'll have the location, uh, GPS support. You'll have geocoding, geo routing. Uh, you'll be able to take your your maps offline, and you'll be able to uh, create graphics and do basic symbology. And that's kind of the feature set we're going out the door with. Um, so notable ex exclusions, you know, we're not going to have 3D on day one, and we're not going to have some of the more advanced or special APIs, such as, you know, utility network um, or advanced symbology or things like OAuth, authentication, or the geometry editor. And there's a longer list of things we're not shipping, um, so I won't list them all. Um, but the idea is, as we go, 
we are going to fill out the rest of the, of the functionality. And our goal is we'll get to the point where the Flutter SDK has all the same uh, functionality that you'd get from the other SDKs. So the goal is to make you know, a, a first class fully supported uh, SDK in Flutter. And uh, going out the door, our initial platform support um, will be mobile. It'll be iOS and Android as your deployment targets. And then as your development host, um, we, we're expecting you to use Mac OS. That's kind of the best way to get on iOS, and it certainly supports Android. So that's kind of our main thrust going out the door. Uh, you'll be able to use Mac OS to develop your apps and then deploy onto iOS and Android. And a couple other notes about the beta program. And this is a big one. This is the big one. This is the key takeaway from this session is uh, your feedback will drive our decision making. Um, so if you have use cases that need specific feature sets, uh, please get on to the early adopter site or uh, talk to us or the uh, project product managers here and let us know. Tell us what your use case is. Tell us what you would like to see uh, from the ArcGIS Maps SDK for Flutter, and that'll uh, drive our priorities and our what we're going to develop uh, going into the future. Um, the second point uh, for licensing: at the moment, you would use uh, API keys just like you do for other native SDKs of, our, of ours. You'll get your API key from the developer website. And um, as while we are in beta, you can't, you're not licensed to release an app built with the beta. Um, so it's more of a tech preview and, uh, and a way to, for you to give us feedback on what you want to see. And then the final big announcement that everyone cares about is when we're going to go to a final fully supported release. And I can tell you, TBD. Um, but I have been authorized to say that we definitely intend uh, to have something by the end of the year. Uh, so well, certainly by the time we are here, Dev Summit 2025, um, hopefully you know we'll be able to say, here's our release, here's our release timeline. Otherwise, watch the blog and give us feedback and let us know um, your use cases and your interest and uh, right. And then so we have some time for Q and A. Uh, if anybody has any questions, we got another twelve minutes. So since it's connected into the core using that uh, inter that foreign interface, everything that is available in the core based on widgets, any of those pieces are available in this, or is there a limited subset? Well, we we're we should repeat we're the enabling them over time. We repeat the question, right? Oh yeah. So the question was, you know, since the interoperability layer gives us provide support for the entire feature set of ArcGIS. Um, is that available in Flutter? And the answer is we are sort of gating it. We're limiting it. And we are um, releasing the parts into the Flutter world as we prove them out and as we understand that we're able to support them correctly, or at least up to a beta level. Um, and so certainly, as we go, we'll say we'll open it up a little further. We'll kind of open the aperture to cover, embrace more of the, of the maps core functionality. And Thanks. Well, editing, you explored A question about editing, what, uh, probably no. Uh, there, there'll be a little bit of editing, I think. Um, but that's definitely the thing we want to hear. So like, we'll firstly, scramble to uh, write down notes to say we've had interest in editing. Um, it's like what kind of editing specifically? I'll just make this simple, the question. Okay, yeah. Yeah, hopefully, you know, that's we'll, where we'll start, certainly. Yeah. Related tables. And related tables, yeah. Yep. When is the time you're supporting desktop? 
Uh, so the question is, when will we support desktop? And the question is, um, we are dependent on Flutter providing support to their platform view widget. And they are ongoing doing development of their platform view widget. Um, and they, they intend and they plan this year to support um, at least Windows and Mac. Um, and once that domino falls, then it becomes, then, then it comes to us to enable it in our SDK. Um, and that's another question, that's another question of priorities. You know, if we get a lot of feedback saying, we, you know, mobile's great, but we also want to be cross-platform on desktop, then that'll bump that up um, our priority list. Um, but we're definitely held back by what Flutter can support with their platform view. Uh, well, you can use .NET MAUI. Uh, you can also use the Qt SDK that covers all of the supported platforms if you want to work in C++. Otherwise, you can use C -sharp .net to hit the platforms. Other questions? In the back. Uh, so the question was, if you're already running native on iOS and Android, how do you uh, move to Flutter? Um, it, it is a, a very different tech stack. Uh, so you do have to you know, commit to learning the Flutter and Dart tech stack. Uh, there's, not a lot of, there's not a lot that you can automatically convert from what you have currently. Uh, oh, and there is one, one glimmer of hope and that is Flutter allows you to call to the native platform. So if you have a lot of code written in Swift or Kotlin, um, you can build a Flutter app and call into your Kotlin code and your Swift code. So you don't have to make a complete uh, rewrite. You can um, bring along your existing code and, and integrate it into Flutter. <laughs> Other questions? Um, so, what's that? No. Okay, so a couple of thoughts, final thoughts. Um, and if there are more questions, definitely you can grab me or Jen um, here or tomorrow. Um, so, next steps watch for earlyadopter.esri.com. Um, make a calendar entry to hit refresh every day uh, or just wait for the blog, post an announcement. Um, and then while you're waiting for the Maps SDK to come out, definitely hop on to flutter.dev and learn about Flutter development in the more general sense. And then the th third thing you can do uh, is you can come find either of us at, at the Expo Showcase or the Showcase Expo, I'm not sure which one. Uh, and we'll be in the native SDKs, or the native, native development uh, clump right by the front door. Uh, you can ask us questions, and also we are definitely interested in hearing from you your planned or proposed use cases. And uh, so that could motivate us to pick your favorite feature set and get it implemented and exposed in the beta um, and then kind of last, you see this at every session, uh, definitely download your Esri events app. If you have feedback for this particular session, find the session um, and fill out the survey. Uh, and then anything else, any last words? All yeah. right, and so that is the end of our very first ever Flutter SDK tech session. Thank you everybody for coming and for your interest. Thank you. And I'll talk to you.